doctors across the country to begin discharging patients and referring them because the government has been on strike for the last seven years and to, tonight we will join them fully. Deputy Secretary General Dennis Miskela on his part said that this is because the government has failed to meet their demands. A strike is the only power that workers have. Withdrawal of labor and skills are the, is the only way that a worker can compel a heartless, belligerent employer to come to the table to negotiate. Regrettably, the government has shown a lack of willingness to address these pressing concerns, leaving healthcare workers in a state of frustrations and dismay. It is with great disappointment and sadness that we announce the commencement of our nationwide strike from tonight, the 13th day of March at 00 hours. This event comes as Azimio Laomoja coalition led by minority leader Opio Wandai has demanded for the immediate resignation of health CS Susan Nakumicha over her failure to advert to avert the looming strike. The doctor's strike, which has been called by the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Union, could have been averted. And for the avoidance of doubt, we stand in solidarity with the doctors. Sure. And we demand that the government does whatever it is necessary, first and foremost, to avert the strike, but more importantly, to address the issues that the doctors are raising. President William Ruto has affirmed Kenya's commitment to taking leadership of the UN Security Support Mission in Haiti in a phone call with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Ruto confirmed that Blinken had briefed him on the decision of the summit of Caribbean countries and the U.S. together with other partners on the political situation in Haiti. The president stated that Blinken had informed him that a new presidential council would be formed shortly to manage the situation in the country. The development comes even after... Pre- uh, the Principal Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Korir Singoi, explained that Kenya was halting its mission as a result of the resignation of Haiti's Prime Minister. It's essentially ready to go. As a matter of fact, just um, last week, a team from the UN um, Human Rights Office. I'm saying that just to emphasize the fact that in terms of readiness and preparedness, this contingent was, is ready to deploy. But it is my understanding and my knowledge that there has been no deployment at this point in time. And finally, Joseph Irungu's mother has vouched for her son's innocence, saying he'd never killed anyone. Speaking after jury's sentencing in the Monica Kimani murder case, the mother expressed her confidence in the eventual acquittal of her son. The court sentenced Joy to death yesterday after finding him guilty of killing Monica Kimani on September 19, 2018. Justice Grayson Zioka indicated that the nature of the killing warranted the highest penalty. Based on everything I have said, I have ordered that the first accused person before this court, being Joseph Kuria Irungu alias Joey, shall suffer death as provided for the offense of murder under section 204 of the Penal Code of Kenya. And that sentence is roughly set aside by a court of competent jurisdiction. That's the news wire. I'm Lea Ubaga. One oh two point five Spice FM Kisumu. The following takes place from six AM to ten AM every weekday on Spice FM. The man who looks at a beautiful girl and doesn't talk to her will end up serving lunch at her wedding. (laughs) (laughs) Aye, City, Mm. do like that. My father has killed a mouse. Will he fail to kill a man? Small mammal, big mammal. So, what, what well, how are we comparison? I mean, you a mouse. What are they boy. saying? What they're saying is, uh, my father has killed a mouse. <laughs> Will he fail to kill a man? <laughs> <laughs> name, surprise. Someone's name. So, the name I'm surprised you? No, the name is surprise. <laughs> no, what am I saying? I'm from Nigeria, man. I met somebody <laughs> called I Believe. So, See? Uh, 
Your name is I believe. Yes, my name is I believe. But that's the short form. I said, excuse me. I said yes. My no, name is bro. I believe. So what's no, the full no, name? I believe in the goodness of God. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. Good morning, and I love your show. Thank you. Thank you. Having come from a Kikuyu radio background, I migrated to Spice <laughs> because of the content. I was born in a slum, but somehow I got a break in life. So sometimes when you see the sweating coming out because of the passion and whatever it is, <laughs> <laughs> behind the noise, there are people, and we share the same umbilical cord. It shouldn't be like that. I am so disappointed. We used to tell Honda Boraila Molotinga that he's doing police of conmanship. And even President Uhuru Kenyatta, Sirikali, he is doing conmanship. You cannot promise people that you reduce tax, then you double. In politics, mm. there is uh, the issue of trust. Mm. For you to turn around and then stab the same people who gave you that trust, there is no other level of dishonesty. The situation. If a lion shows you its teeth, it doesn't mean it likes you. <laughs> it doesn't mean it likes you. Mm. It won't start. <laughs> <laughs> a liar calls as witness one who is either dead or far away. Say it in this way. Bello, nin inte, yenin ter, ayu makati kadikta. You know this uh, character called a uh, liar. He has disturbed people. Mm -hmm. So when you tell him, uh, who are your witnesses? He will take you to a place where it is difficult to verify. For someone like me who sweats uh, a lot, <laughs> I cannot survive there. <laughs> you know, sweating is biblical. <laughs> and you must blame it on Adam, not me. You know, because Adam messed up and, uh, and, and he was told, now you fellow, you, by the sweat of your brow, oh, yes. <laughs> thou shalt eat. <laughs> the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. It's Thursday and here we are looking into another day of what could be a lot of traffic, but mm, look and see. Um, into the city, coming in from Westlands, that looks pretty good on Waikiki. not much happening here. The Northern Bypass is also quite free. Uh, we'll see a little bit of movement coming in from... Uh, the Pangani underpass, but that's a, actually a very little bit of movement. And the thicker super highway looks good, at least for now. Coming off of Outer Ring, not much traffic at all. And on Jogoro, as you head out towards Landis and then through to the Kamkunji roundabout, um, not much happening here either. We're going to keep an eye on things and see how Thursday starts out. Spice of MKE on next hashtag the Situation Room. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day. morning and welcome to Thursday. How are you doing today? It's at nine minutes after six o'clock and here we are kicking it off into a new morning and looking at what's in store for us. Hope you're doing well. The heavens opened yesterday and it rained rain like actual rain coming from the sky. And that was interesting because it was pretty hot. And the weatherman had said we we're not sure when that was going to happen. But voila, here we are. And the rain 
rained. All right, so getting us start off into the morning and uh, we're looking at some conversations that we will have today. Uh, we're coming round about to um, Justice Thursday and some of those conversations that we have will have today. Pretty interesting. All right. Um, we're going to start off, however, at 7 a.m. with Senator Samson Chirage. He will be here at 7 and we'll be looking at the accountability or rather accountability in the counties. We've seen Senate has moved from here and there. Um, They've been in Turkana, they've been in quite a number of other areas, looking at really what's been going on. And as we have that conversation today, the good senator of um, Nandi will be with us at seven. All right, at eight o'clock, we'll have two guests in the studio, Dr. Edwin Mbogwa Minor and Christian Schnipper will be with us here at seven, or rather at eight. And we'll be looking at Kenya's Global Hunger Index Report 2023, the power of youth in shaping food systems. That conversation happens at eight. And then finally, at nine o'clock, it's Justice Thursday, face to face with a traffic offense, what to do. The Honorable Martha Nanzushi, who's a senior principal magistrate and an accountant in the judiciary, Celestin Busieka, will be with us here at nine and we'll be looking into that conversation and the questions around what to do when that happens. All right, so that's what our conversations are lined up for today. A number of things happened in the country yesterday. We're going to take a look at that in a short while for now. Um, we'll take a look at weather and be back shortly. Edna nasema kuna weather. What do you mean? You've just rocked up now. Yeah, I'm here talking to myself. Edna hakuna weather. Mm. Ati. Mm. Ati. Ati. Mm -hmm. One more time. Ati hakuna weather. Okay. Mm. So then when there's no weather, what do you do? You say it rained, but yeah. it rained, eh? That's what I said, it rained, rained. I've even mm -hmm. told people how it rained, rained. I've said that things happened, and here we are. What things? The rain rained. Oh, yeah. Did it rain it where rain? you were? I yes, it was. Why. This it was. was looking. It was for a couple of hours, it was. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Mm. Okay. And it was lovely? It was nice. Okay. It was. The earth cooled down and all those good things. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have any weather sasabasi. <laughs> This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Partly cloudy conditions in Nairobi after the rain. We'll see the highs of 27 and lows of 16. FM. And it's 14 and cloudy in Nakuru with highs of 29. 26 will be the high in a partly cloudy Nyeri at 16. And it's 6, 14 and clear in Eldoret with highs of 27. We'll see lows of 14. Mombasa is cloudy at 28 with highs of 34. While in Malindi at 28, it's clear going to highs of 34 as well. Kisumu is clear at 20, highs of 32. And we'll see highs of 32 in a clear Kakamega at 17. Out into Kampala, it's partly cloudy at 20 with highs highs of 30, while Dar es Salaam at 26 is partly cloudy, going to highs of 32. Johannesburg is clear at 19 with highs of 30, while in Mogadishu at 27 is partly sunny with highs of 33. Addis Ababa at 13 is clear, highs of 24 and lows of 11, while clear conditions at 28 in Lagos will see highs of 33. Kinshasa is partly cloudy at 26 with highs of 32. We're looking into a sunny Beijing at 15 degrees, highs of 21 on a Thursday afternoon. Paris is cloudy at 6 degrees, highs of 18 while London at 10 degrees is cloudy with highs of 16. New York is 9 degrees and clear. We'll see highs of 17 and lows of 8. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 yes, yes, Spice yes, FM, yes. Nairobi. How are you? Very well, thank you. Very good, very good. Very welcome, Zima. Mimi ni kumzima kabisa. Yes, yes, hofu kwako. Si, na hata mimi hofu. Ano, itafuta. Hmm. Na uja yona. Kabisa. Yes. Na shukuru mungu. Mm-hmm. Hata ndu unamwana. Hmm. He? Na mcheki, by the way. Mcheki? Ndiyo. He? I'm going to son of those. Way, way. I'm a moor, my friend. Basi, basi, basi. I'm a moor. Liwe liwalo. Liwe liwalo. Kesi badai. Kesi badai. Yes. Wataka ukwende wa kwende. Yes. Wataka na mna hiyo. Very good. Aya. Ndu. 
Yes. Who's online? Collins Kip Tai. Kim Tai Kip Sat says, Good morning. Mm. And Nyakwar Odrang Kaudi mm. says, Good morning. Bless Kenya. Kisumu should be on top of the list of what? Okay, Sawa. Mm -hmm. He's tuning from Manyata and Kisumu. Mm -hmm. And from Magadi, um, Robert Milia Kai says, Good morning. And George Mashuki is tuned in this morning from Kasarani. We see you guys coming in on Facebook, and uh, everybody, we say to you what we say good morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where else is everybody this morning? Um, folks are tuned in on. Um, on X as well, and we yeah, see yeah, this morning. Yeah, good morning, yeah. good morning. Tune in from Elder. It says Enoch Sami um, Shiskas says good morning. Always listening in from Naivasha, and Edu is tuned in from Kasarani this morning as well, um, and says hello. Good to be here. Great to have you in the room as well. Mm. Okay, um, Peter Maya says Umamka. Yes, we have. Have mm. a wonderful day. Good morning from Mombasa says Robert and Bogo, and even Zintabo says good morning. Um, um mamua sawa mamuka sawa rather mm. be blessed good morning truthful team looking forward to good conversation in the situation room today jacinta wambo is tuning from san francisco and she says what's going on in kilimani at night city can you tell us ah uh, what's going on where in kilimani at night it rained uh, there you go see okay that's it um rafael yeah. kiga says good morning mm. uh moon soon says good morning guys good day to everybody mm. i'm jamba watuangu waiting for the fire topic this morning or the hot topic rather um have a blessed day from arizona robinson kisero is tuning from hong kong and says good morning the three the wise men and the lady looking forward to a fruitful conversation indeed uh, and yeah. gore says chamge my beautiful people greetings from the beautiful hills of saboti Transoya. good morning to you too good morning team spice uh says mashari and jeru jumbo situation room we are getting you loud and clear in texas oganyi malala says good morning joseph and is also here rogers nyange is tuned in as well as kennedy wanjala Gitahi Gishohi says good morning and Samuel Juma is tuned in from a place that is spelled like this J-Y-V J-Y-V Okay A with the two dots on the top S-K-Y-L with another A with the two dots on the top Okay Is it is it pronounced with the mouth? I wonder, my dear. At this, at this point, it's your foot. Huh? That's it. <laughs> you know, that could actually be the sound, or it could be like G. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all, the, all those letters. Just, Which part of the world is that in? Yeah? Must be Finland. Finland. It's Finland. Ah, Finland. Must be Finland. They're finished. Okay. <laughs> They're finished. Good morning. Um, Monica Oyle says good morning. Joe mm. Muga is also tuned in. Samuel Baraka. Peter Gikon, Gitonga. Um, KK says tune in from Harbin in China. Meshak Njenga is also here this morning. Washington Okechi um, says good morning, my professional people. Good to be here. You're tuning in from Cambridge. Mm. Um, and Jesus Protect. Okay. Hmm? Jack is tuning in from Mombasa. <laughs> Why did you go with Jesus? I don't Why know. not Jesus? I don't know. It's just weird. <laughs> Because most of the people who are called Jesus are called Jesus. <laughs> that I'm is actually, the name. Yeah, Jesus I'm actually, is Jesus. Yeah, I know. But I've not seen anybody pronounce it as, G uh, my name is Jesus. Mm. It's mostly, yo soy Jesus. <laughs> but Brazilians and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, what are those people? Portuguese. Yes. Yes. They yes. say J. So it's Jesus. No, their J is silent. Ye, yo, ye, yo. Yo is actually spelled J-O. <laughs> Mm. The J That's why is Marijuana is Marijuana. Yeah. For Portuguese, I think the J comes out mm. like Jose Mourinho. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the Spaniards now will just put the. <laughs> right. So they may say Jesus, but yeah. they don't say Jesus. Yes. Yeah. They say Jesus. Jesus. Does the J come with a apostrophe on top? No, because it's a hard letter. Oh, as opposed to being a soft, soft letter. 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 Yeah. Oh, soft like E or A or O. <laughs> So usually in those languages, Soft. you will have the accent and the over vowels. a vowel. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So vowel as opposed to the other one, consonant. consonant. Mm. Yes. I was thinking. It's what? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Adelaide, Australia is where Joseph and Jehia is. And Alex of Nice says, good morning from Lucille. Where is Lucille? Oh, oh. Uh, I know. Who? Lucille. Lucille. Uh, let me check. L-U-S-A-I-L. Let, let, let me check. It's in Qatar. It's in Qatar. Ah, mm. voila. Oh, okay. I remember during the World Cup, there was a stadium mm. in Lucille. Mm -mm. 
eh, iko watu ya Facebook very good yes. city mm -hmm. we are in that uh, island still we are in the island republic of Seychelles, mm. and we will be there until tomorrow okay okay mm. iko sawa 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 opportunity does not wake up those who are asleep Opportunity does not wake up those who are asleep. Okay. Ukitaka kulala wewe endelea kulala. Unapata maenda. Opportunity kuja na yeye atakwenda. Okay. Na wewe utabaki. Okay. Mm. Aya. Aya, ndio? Yeah. Do like that. Okay. Um on the front page of the standard this morning well there is a picture of why Joey got the death sentence. That was a 4 hour reading yesterday from um she likes reading. Justice Grayson Zioka. She went bit by bit by bit. She left nothing unturned. And then in, I counted, six seconds, mm. she gave the sentence. The first accused will suffer death. Imagine. Shall, will suffer death. That's what she said. After reading for <laughs> four hours, she then said, in consideration of all of that, the first accused shall suffer death. And then she went on to thank the court and all the other people that she'd been there for, you know, you must preamble it. My goodness, it was well preambled. Now, can you imagine, right? This is just one of many tens of cases that she's handling. Imagine. She actually apologized. Imagine now how long it takes her to prepare just a judgment of a case mm. and then the, the sentencing. sentencing. How many hours did it take her to write these four hours? She read in four hours. How long did it take her to prepare it? Exactly. My goodness. How many hours did she take to prepare the judgment? Essentially, yeah. you're being given a complete walk through the process she took to arrive at the conclusion so that you will not be confused by her confusion no essentially and that you know in, when i started watching i was like okay here we go mm. i thought okay maybe an hour tops mm. but then i realized what she was doing later is that so at the time that she's giving that final thing mm. you will understand exactly why she has reached where that she conclusion. has reached if you had a question she'll tell you you would have gone back and said but this is what mm. she prefaced with she knows it'll go to appeal she knows so she's giving the judges of appeal her reason adequate for that mm. mm. it will go to appeal it will it'll be interesting to see uh, standing huh? in the dock and staring blank blankly as the judge delivered a verdict a crestfallen joseph irongo alias joey bent and clutched his arms when he was condemned to hang the pain was however nowhere near that suffered by monica kimani that's on the front page, and you'll see it on many dailies this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, sex offences, views split on penalties, that's in national news. Should court be given a leeway to deal with those convicted of sexual abuse? The Supreme Court is to decide. Very good. We'll hear. Doctors begin strike as, as um, doctors begin strike after state talks fail. Kenyans to suffer as doctors in public hospitals begin a nationwide strike after the union failed to arrive at a consensus with the government on, issued af on issues affecting healthcare workers. Yikes. Mm -hmm. State assault. World is told to stand with Kenyan media. President William Ruto's administration has come under heavy condemnation over its systemic attack on independent media. Some 20 lobby groups warned in Nairobi yesterday that the state a front led by broadcasting and telecommunications ps edward kisiangani had starved free media of their traditional revenue streams after withdrawal of government advertising from independent print and broadcast media which was instead diverted to one newspaper entity and the state broadcaster kbc okay. the world okay is told to stand okay. with kenyan media okay so Okay. okay, so we'll look more into those details later, Sour. shall we? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> on the front page of The Nation, bread and milk tena, Ihani. New plan to tax bread and milk. Propose and, and butter. Sasa. Okay, go on. <laughs> you know butter comes from milk. Twendele. Proposal risks <laughs> inflicting a bigger burden on poor families. Well, obviously, mm -hmm. because 16% milk and bread are currently zero rated, but the Treasury is now seeking to levy VAT on the two products consumed by millions of Kenyans. How fair is that? Battle to save Ryla's AU bid. The African Executive Council is meeting tomorrow in Addis Ababa that will make or break Ryla's candidacy for chairperson of the AU Commission. To save? Yeah. When it was in jeopardy. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, 
headlines and that's the implication right yeah mm-hmm. it's like it was in jeopardy so now you know it's mm-hmm. like this meeting is being held to save his bid <laughs> like uh, uh, and do they indicate what the jeopardy was or what it is that was threatening the bid well not a, not well see we'll, we can look into it but uh, off the face of this it would appear as so. though you know they're meeting for him okay the return of cas's <laughs> house team caps post at 22 a parliamentary committee has approved the creation of the position of chief administration and secretary but caps the number at 22 spelling doom for more than 50 politicians whose appointments were nullified by the courts this should be fun mm. as the story again of how joey went down it's on the front page um he was handed the death sentence for the murder of businesswoman monica kimani um, that took place on the 19th of September 2018. Okay. Media players fight state ads order. The Kenya Media Sector Working Group says PSS directive is a threat to press freedom. Mm. And again, there is a story of Kenyans between a rock and hard place as doctors strike. Hiya. Business Daily, the big headline, small firms given a window to share big state tenders. Small Kenyan contractors have been handed an opportunity to fight for big ticket state projects that are under the tight grip of moneyed Chinese counterparts. After the Treasury published guidelines on how a single tender will be split among several suppliers. So one big tender now is going to come in small, small bits. One big tender A, one big tender B, one big tender C. So you can then uh, bid for that. The regulations published by Treasury CS Jogon and Dungo have opened a new window for a segment of contractors that's often outmus- outmuscled from the mega project for lacking financial or technical capacity. Hiya. Ah, Treasury miles VAT on bread, milk and fresh revenue push. Uh, ticker headlines, farmers face new levy on harvests traded on exchange platform. <laughs> Farmers are expected to part with a new 0.25% levy on gross value of their harvests traded on the Kenya National Multi Commodities Exchange, whose kickoff has been postponed. It has been postponed, but when it comes, Kerry will be there. <laughs> Media Mall's legal action of a KBC adverts order. Okay. Bank share prices gain as investors eye dividends. And then there is a. Uh, an article here, Intelligence, written by our man in Belgium, Bitangen Demo, is Kenya's ambassador to the EU. He writes, Beyond Uganda, which has long been Kenya's leading trade partner, the EU is the country's largest commercial partner. Yeah. And they also have a feature story here, Life. And they're featuring the man who made, let me read that, that uh, let, me, let me go to the story itself and read the headline itself from the story. So that you get it, the full gist from where it is in page 10. Page 10, this is page 11, page 12, page 10. Oh, they said it's in page 10, it's not. These people were. <laughs> Check properly. P- oh, it's 19. Sorry, yes, sorry, yes, sorry. Sorry. Sometimes page 9 19. can look like a zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially early in the morning. Yeah. Yes, yes. The life segment of the Business Daily. The man who made Java tap the Dawa market. Have you taken the Java Dawa? Mm-hmm. But, uh, no autographs are signed and not even selfies are taken, but there will be a signature from this. A hot signature, if you may. Mutie Mbalo, the man who introduced the popular Dawa Java house in 2002, has handed the drink right from the kitchen and the throat is about to witness it. So the guy who actually started the Java Dawa is called Mutie Mbalo. Okay? Mm-hmm. See Mutie Mbalo. Motie Mbalo. <laughs> that is his name. Siti Muga, mm-hmm. tell us what's on the star. Mm. Right, top right hand corner mm. in Till Green. Yes. By next week, eh. next week, uh-huh. mm-hmm, beginning uh-huh. Sunday, uh-huh. over 42,000 cops set for mass transfer. Rock this Wendy is the story rock. on page nine. It's done the rounds. Mm-hmm. Well, familiarity and how that breeds Contest. malcontents and how the malcontents now breed insurrection and how insurrection mm-hmm. breeds and the story mm-hmm. goes on all right all right spoken to several cops by there who are like oh yeah 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 <laughs> the people who are going to be transferred are the very innocent officers mm-hmm. those who are targeted those ones who have oh, familiarity oh, nee, 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 nee. those ones they'll be moved to a station that's 20 kilometers away after like six months, they'll be back to this station. 
apparently the level of uh, impunity in those things upon mchezo the cop goes and lives in one police station for years they are actually an anchor for very many magendo businesses and so on and so forth they do yes they are the reference point for very many things mm e kwendo mwana nani kwendo mwana nani even a new ocs comes there anaambiwa kwendo mwana nani anaambiwa by the way eh afande afande mkubwa afande wacha nikuambie hapa vile tunafanyanga ukwa ukijua kwa hii station even you know fanyang and that is an OCS that's the way it is yes. 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 being told by a junior officer just a constable because the alternative is you the OCS will do all the other things mm. Mm. kuna shida na utaenda apige OCS simu unajua hata nani alikuwa anga OCS hapo huyu unani sasa unaona ni regional commissioner regional police alikuwa hapa kama OCS tulikuwa naye hapa lakini you are still a constable the guy is was an OCS is now <laughs> and the person is still regional constable commissioner. Yeah, but hajao itoka kwa station. Na anakuambia he is basically telling you that guy planted diseases here. Hmm. I am in touch with our regional police commander. So, okay. it, so it is not you who is in charge. So it's not you. <laughs> Wewe unafikiri umekuja hapa boss. <laughs> so essentially I don't you, report to you. you you've been given I mean, a fair you are here but you know you've been given a fair warning. Mm. And in an institution where hierarchy is everything, mm. you know exactly what you've been told. Oh yeah. Woman troubled by wounds for 12 years appeals for help. A family in the baby in Ivasha is appealing to well wishers to help their mother who has been bedridden for 12 years suffering from wounds. A family of Faith and Jerry has exhausted their savings while seeking treatment for a wound that has spread to both her legs leaving her unable to walk. Okay. The problem is not the wound. Yeah. The problem what is causing okay, how many years? 12. 12 12 12 12 12 12 okay i sold my business raise funds witness in monda hearing monda remember the dr eh, monda eh dr monda eh the deputy governor the deputy governor kc was mshimiwa m- m- mp at some point or eh. the other eh. now he is on who is facing what impeachment impeachment now there's a family who are alleging that they gave uh, the governor robert monda 800,000 to secure a job for their son and this old business is to raise the funds he he god almighty this one <laughs> the orchestra has started i hear those who are watching it i was just seeing comments and they were like the drum in the senate crazy so you paka people were shedding tears mm. yeah mpaka yani now it's like orchestra the conductor amefanya hii that small little twig of a stick that they normally have <laughs> okay they go boom boom then like a boom then when they wave it right, left right here bru <laughs> eh, bars Here we are. Sawa well, sawa. Uh-huh. And the story goes on. A bang in the middle of the paper. The lim limitation. Limi. Limitation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, limitation. Mm-hmm. Exercise has stalled due to dysfunctional electoral commission. <laughs> Boundary review. Mm. Why you won't get a new MP? Mm. Well, which means also you won't get a new county if you're looking for one. Thank God. Parliament is considering postponing the process until 2027 election. Mm. This is well, essentially we're being told the plan. We understand. Mm. We understand when you've been this clear to us, we understand. Mm. And then as per normal, there is in the middle literally in the middle of the paper, mm. there is a picture of uh, Joseph Irungu mm-hmm. uh, being handcuffed at the Milimani uh, courts and then there's a picture of his parents Anastasia Irungu and the father Julius Irungu this is a very sad story mm. sad in whichever way you look at it i mean these are young people mm. for this to turn out this way i mean this it's not as though there's a better death or there's a better way for people to die or to commit a crime mm. but when two young people are said to lose their lives you wonder what was all this about yeah did it need to end this way no Monica's family's wish is fulfilled as Joey sentenced to death. Mm. Okay. It's 25 minutes to 7. Let's see what's happening on the roads. This is the situation room. The only way to start your day. All right, so seeing uh, some
traffic buildup on the Thicker Superhighway coming in towards Pangani at the underpass. That's packed as you're trying to get into the CBD. Um, but I think that's probably the most that we're going to see of it right about now. There's some traffic then coming in um, right around Kastarani, but that shouldn't be too tro too much trouble, at least not at this point. As you're coming off from Gong Road, nothing's happening there. Coming in from Mongata Rongai and then touching on Magadi Road out towards Langata Road, we will probably see some movement there later. All right, uh, for now, coming off of the Eastern Bypass, not much. Um, we'll see some movement on Kangunda Road and then some jam traffic, actually, as you get towards Outer Ring. We'll keep an eye on things. We're getting into traffic and our traffic hour in about an hour or so let's talk on spice fmk eonx hashtag the situation room mature intelligent talk every morning spice up yourself Right. I have a see. 94.4 Spice yeah, FM. Of Nine. Punishment in the plea to the Apex Court. Mm -hmm. All right. This is something that has been in contention for a while. The Supreme Court was treated to split opinions on how to deal with sex offenders. On one hand, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Benson Ngonga, wanted the Law on Sexual Offenses Act retained. According to him, the mandatory sentences handed to sex offenders are constitutional and fair. Fuck mm -hmm. that. Joshua Gishuki, the convict at the center of the landmark case, however, urged the Supreme Court to affirm a finding that judges and magistrates should be given leeway to deal with those convicted of sexual abuse. Mm. In other words, you shouldn't just say, okay, well, the law says that this is how we must punish you and that's how we're going to punish you. But basically what he's saying is that each officer at the point of when they're adjudicating should be able to look at the merits should be able to look at the details of that particular case and then rule as per or case by case okay what has been happening previously is that when a case comes before court they'll say well look mandatory minimum sentence is this that's what you're going to get end mm, of story from this point going up upwards mm -hmm. all right yeah so now Gishuk is saying, come on, guys, look at every case differently mm. and then punish as per if need be. Yeah. In the meantime, friends of the court, mm. um, Amiki Kure, mm. Federation of Women Lawyers, FIDA, mm. Women's Link Worldwide, Kenya Legal and Ethical Network on HIV and AIDS, mm. um, that's Kellen, an initiative for strate strategic litigation in Africa, wants the minimum sentences retained. They are saying this minimum sentence should retain stay. it. You can add on top of it. What's the argument? However, the group suggested an avenue for judges to met out higher sentences than those provided, based, uh, pr yeah, those provided based on circumstances of each case. The case was heard by Chief Justice Martha Kome and Justices Mohamed Ibrahim, Smokin Wanjala, Jokin Tungu and Isaac N Lenaola. In his submissions, Ngonga argued that the Court of Appeal um, erred by finding that sexual offences is the act is unconstitutional mm. for prescribing mandatory sentences to be handed to convicts. Okay? Okay. According to him, Parliament crafted the current law based on knowledge and appreciation that victims of sexual violence live with scars of either rape, gang rape, defilement, or absurd behavior such as groping. He argued that the Court of Appeal was not supposed to reopen Gishuki's case as the facts of the case were not contested. They said, look, it was this was cut and dry. Why are we now going back to it and starting to have a conversation Looking around? Merits. Maybe, maybe. No, oh. don't do it. So he says that uh, he th they were presented by acting assistants. So his case was presented um, by a number and the DPP appealed against the verdict of the Court of Appeal judges Wanjiro Karanja, Patrick Kiage and Jamila Muhammad. He argued that Kenya's laws lacks safety valves to ensure victims receive justice and that convicts do not repeat the same offense. Mm. He asserted that the three judges made an error by reducing Gishuki's sentence as he had not raised the same issue before the High Court. Ngonga explained that the sentences provided do not compromise the independence of judges and magistrates. Now, on the other hand, Gishuki is urging the court to find that imposing mandatory sentences in the act is a violation of the constitution. Mm. He was initially representing himself. However, the Court of Appeal directed lawyer Wahome Gikonyo to represent him. In his submissions, Gikonyo was of the view 
that the sentences provided in law are cast in stone and they should not be cast in stone. Okay. According to him, this does not give a judge or a magistrate leeway to hand a judgment based on circumstances at the offence and the mitigating factors. He stated that in his client's case, the victim, who was 15 years old, voluntarily walked to Gishuki's home. Wahome said Gishuki would have gotten another sentence if the magistrate was allowed to look into the other factors beyond the offence. So what they're saying is, there was a violation that happened. This victim was 15. According to the law, she is below... She's underage. Um, she's underage. She's a she's minor. She's a child. She's mm -hmm. a minor. Mm -hmm. You violate her, you are guilty. This is the punishment. How old was Gishuki? At the time? Yeah. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Does it say... It does not give us, but the assumption from all of this is that he was above he the was age an adult of 18. At the point. Yes. He was 18 on a day mm. or something. So, so the matter is before um, the Supreme Court. Yes. Should Justice Njoki Ndongo sit on this bench? This is really? She is the author of the law being discussed. Mm. Should so she, she not sit? Biased? Yeah, should she sit on? Well, she could help the other judges understand the reasoning behind the Sexual Offences Act, but really, uh, should she? <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, the person who wrote the law, and you are here to talk about the aspects of that law, and you're the judge, and you're saying, "You shall stay, or you shall." Okay, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't think she should. Mm. Mambo ya mashamba hii Kenya mm. ni mingi. I'll give you two stories. Mm -hmm. One of them, the Environment and Lands Court has barred a woman from accessing prime land located in Nairobi's Karen Estate, a case filed by Avind Kanji Patel against Dorcas Joan Kipto, who is claiming, who claimed to have invaded the land. Patel is listed as the director of surveys Ah, listed the director of surveys, the chief land registrar, and the attorney general as the second, third, and fourth respondents. Um, now, the orders were issued as an injunction to restrain the lady from entering upon, remaining on, or in any manner whatsoever interfering with these rights on the suit property pending determination of this matter. The court heard that Kanji Naran Patel bought the land registered as LR number 6132 from the late Henry Albert Moore on the tra and the transfer was registered. Naran died in 1995. Jayanti Kanji Patel, who's the deceased, and Avind what appointed the joint executors of his estate in a succession case of 1996. <laughs> Avind received a certificate of confirmation in 1997 as a joint executor of that man's land. In his submission, he says, the confirmation certificate has never been remote, revoked or annulled. According to him, he is the registered owner of this piece of land and has been paying land rates since 1997. March 2nd, 2024, he alleges that this lady called Joan Kipto came with hired goons and AP officers and forcefully entered and trespassed this property. It's in Karen. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 20, 30, 40, 66 acres mm. in Karen. Mm -mm. Mezamate. <laughs> 66 so acres some, Somebody in wants Karen. this land. Eh? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they want all of it. Eh? Oh, yes. yes. And the way to buy it is to bring goons. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. The man reported the matter to the Karen Plains Police Station, and it was booked. Following the report, the OCS moved to the property and chased away, and was chased away by the goons. <laughs> Now, Mr. Avind fears that the land may be transferred or sold to his detriment since a private security company is now manning the property and his employees have no access. Okay? Yoni Kesimoja, 66 acres of right. land. Uh, the other one was where? The other one was it in this paper or was it in the. No, did I? No, 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 no. It's in the business daily. The other story about land. The National Health Insurance Fund, NHIF, risks losing a prime parcel of land worth 7 billion shillings to a third party. This land is in Karen.
The National Assembly's Public Investments Committee on Social Services, Administration and Agriculture heard that a group which has been claiming that 10 hectare piece of land in Karen has cleared all land rent and rates to the Ministry of Lands and the County Government of Nairobi. Alex Oshira, the CEO of NHIF, told the committee that the NHIF had only paid land rent of 32,000 shillings for December 2023. He said, Peter David Lebar Leparaku, representative of a group claiming the land the NHIF bought for 93 million shillings in 2002, paid the land arrears up to 2023. Uh, Washira says, our attempts to pay land rates to Nairobi County government has been unsuccessful because we have a statement from the county showing that one person called Peter David Leparaku mm. has already had already paid 514,000 shillings as land rate for this piece of land. And then they're saying it's not his. Washira said the county government had issued Leparaku with payment receipts despite receiving similar payments from NHIF for the said piece of land. They reported the matter to the current police station. Investigations are ongoing. We learned that when we assumed office recently that no payments had been made between 2013 and 2022. These guys called NHIF bought this land for 93 million shillings in 2002. They were paying land rents and rates between 2002 up to 2013. That's 22 From, years ago. Yep. In 2013, between 2013 and 2023, uh, no payments were being made. A guy called Leparaku goes to county, pays. He's issued with a receipt. NHIF goes, pays. Ah, uh, boss, <laughs> somebody's already paid for this land. Mm. Who? Leparaku. How? Send your receipt. Now the matter is before parliament. It is 10 hectares oh my God. in Karen. And Leparaku says he's representing a group. <laughs> you know the... It's, it's a group. It's, it's not him. It's a this group. This thing group. Is, no, is, is snowballing. <laughs> mm. It started off with expiring leases. Yep. We don't hear anything on that front. It doesn't mean that all is actually quiet. It just means we don't hear of it. Yep. Now we are hearing stories of land in Karen specific. There's... There, what is it about Karen and this madness that everybody wants to live in Karen? It's like you're not living in this country if you're not living in Karen. Abby. What is it? Surely. Huh? Are you living in this country if you're not living in Karen? But like, really, let's be, let's be honest. Yes, you're living. <laughs> and if you're living somewhere else and you want to move to Karen, where you're living, you're not living. Mm. But it's a complete and total madness. Oh, yes. It's, a, it's a piece of sanity that's left in Nairobi, boss. Yes. All the others are gone to insanity it, it went a long time ago 66 acres in current it means it's just lush green lying there and then you'll find somebody wants to build a 40-story flat oh yes yeah you know in current subdivision Africa, so you sell half acre then you four people buy my friend and they build within half within acre the, half acre. the zoning mess mm. that is within this city mm. is going to allow for untold things mm. but anyway Let's sit and wait and mm. see. Let's yeah, see. But there's a lot of madness on land that's going at, on at, in this country. At an absolute madness. And we have a ministry in charge of land. We do have a ministry in charge of land. That should be bringing order. Yep. Like Kenny. But are they? Huh. And are they there to bring order? And can they? <laughs> can they actually? Mm. Do they have intention to bring order? That is a question, isn't or it? Or is order, you know... Or oh, is what we're seeing is what, is what order. they, they, they is, refer to this as order? This is order. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, yeah. There is a group that have been lobbying to have the death penalty abolished. Mm. Okay. Yes. The Defenders Coalition Executive Director is named Kamau Ngugi. Okay. Uh -huh. Civil society players and law experts have renewed a call for abolition of death sentence. Activists and constitutional lawyers who spoke to the Star argue that although Joseph Irungu, Elias, mm. Elias, Joey had been handed death penalty, the current uh, moratorium on the judicial mandate execution should remain. Mm. His penalty should be commuted to a lengthy jail sentence and later, depending on his rehabilitative journey's ass assessment to be done with on whether he should be freed. Mm. Constitutional lawyer Willis Otieno said, although the death penalty still remains in the country's statutes, uh, statute books, the fact that it has not been applied since 1987 shows its ineffectiveness. That argument is faulty. Mm. 
He said, however, that activism for abolition of the penalty is largely at variance with the public, really, mm. who are still of the overwhelming support for the punishment. I understand the public is still looking for retribution so that if you commit an offense that is extreme, like in this case of a planned murder, you should be accorded the remedies that are commensurate with the offense. Mm. The public wants blood spilled. The public wants retribution. That's why, why it's called retribution. Mm. Okay, an eye for? An eye. The public tends to argue that a person who has caused loss of life of another should have his or her life lost in a way of achieving deterrence. The con Ver uh, the conversation is highly um, emotive and requires deep persuasion, especially of the masses. Well, the matter is right there. Uh, well, so this is in court. Yep. And then there's the Opio Wandai bill that's in Parliament. Yes. Okay. But attack, this is a discussion that is a all, front. See, this is all over the world. It, mm. it, we're not the only country that's having this discussion. Nope. Nope. Attack it from all fronts. Mm. All of All of more pain for the sick as doctors begin nationwide strike today. Mm. Sick Kenyans will have to seek treatment to private hospitals as doctors in public hospitals begin their nationwide strike. The Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Union, KMPDU, yesterday said the decision was arrived at due to a lack of consensus with the government on issues affecting healthcare workers across the country. Despite the tireless efforts of the medical professionals and their unwavering dedication to provide quality care to Kenyans, the government's response has been inadequate and devoid of the necessary urgency to resolve these issues effectively. This is according to Secretary General Dav Giatella. His statement came as Azimio Laomoja, one Kenya coalition MPs, called for the resignation of Health CS um, Susan Nahumicha and her principal secretary Mary Mudoni over failure to avert the strike. Um, speaking in Nairobi, Dr. Teller discussed or rather accused the government of reluctance in revo resolving the raised issues. Regrettably, the government has shown a lack of willingness to address these pressing concerns, leaving healthcare workers in a state of frustration and dismay. Therefore, it is with great disappointment that we announced the commencement of a nationwide strike mm. starting from midnight today, March 13th. That was last night. Mm. The strike is centered around the demand for mandatory medical internship posting for over 4,000 medical graduates. The Ministry of Health, however, insists that the deployment of the current batch of medics will require 4.9 billion shillings, with each intern earning 206,000 shillings per month, which it says it cannot afford. The National Assembly Minority Leader, Opio Wandai, led more than 12 legislators in accusing the LCS and PS of incompetence, saying that they will be held responsible for any death as the strike kicks off. Really? <laughs> Opposition MPs are now terming the unavailability of funds as incompetence on the part of the ministry's top brass and have reprimanded the CS over the casual, reckless, incompetent and overly simplistic manner in which she has handled the matter. They have reprimanded. Yes. This is the best that the opposition could do. To reprimand. Reprimand. Akiwewe. Chunga. Nwana hii competence yako. Anywewe ni useless sana. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's it, eh? So now, oh, one day he said that uh, if the health CS is not able to make the National Treasury release funds for a critical ministry like hers, she has no option but to quit. Mm. It is incompetence at the word, of the worst type rather, for the CS to keep lamenting that the National Treasury has mm. not given her money. It is not for the doctors or Kenyans to look for money from the National Treasury. This is the work of the CS, surely. Mm. He said throughout the standoff leading to the strike, the ministry had acted like an uncan an uncaring bystander. Like they were just in the crowd, you know. Yeah. Uh, with its attitude oscillating between cowardice, contempt, and incompetence. They're laying the blame right at the feet of the ministry. Thing begins. Strike begins. And parliament is just sitting there and saying, We are una pesa. What do you mean, Auna Pesa? Jui Kaziako. Kone Jui Kaziako. Where? And that's it. <sighs> okay. Let me tell you a story of something that happened on February 26th. Okay? Mm -hmm. A 46 year old man called Rafael Kiplimo left his house to catch up with his peers after working as usual at Kapkures Shopping Center in Nakuru West, sub county. He's a renowned businessman and a farmer in Nakuru town. He relocated from Kapkomoi village in Baringo Central with his brother more than two decades ago 
to look for greener pastures to supplement the income that he was getting from farming in Kapkures. The father of five won a tender five years ago to supply firewood to some top hotels in Nakuru. Family members said that sometimes he also sold timber to sawmillers in Nakuru. On this particular day that we are talking about, it's reported that the third born in a family of six was in a company of local residents at the shopping center and then a, dub, a black double cab pickup stopped close to where he was. Three people wearing masks and another with a Maasai shuka alighted from the vehicle and they beckoned him. Kiblimo, kuja. He came. Footage from CCTV cameras at Kapures, Kapkures shopping center retrieved by the police captured the car arriving in the area at about 7.23 p.m. The businessman boarded the car. Two minutes later, it drove off. Since then, Kiplimo has not been seen. His younger brother, Kibor Kaplieni, said the people wearing masks sandwiched Kiplimo and walked with him towards the vehicle. Local residents who saw Kiplimo leaving did not suspect any mischief because Kiplimo was talking to these guys as they were walking to the vehicle. Kapleni, the younger brother, says, uh, On that particular day, I passed by Kapkures Trading Center a few minutes past 7 p.m. on my way home. At about 8.30, while I was relaxing in my house, I received a call from Kiplimo's wife mm. asking me if I had seen him or if I knew where his whereabouts. She was getting concerned because she had called him several times and he was not answering. So she told me to call his Safaricom line because his Airtel line was going unanswered. He also now tried calling the Safaricom line. It was going unanswered. That's when he decided, eh, let me call cops. He called the DCI officer at Kaptembo police station to inquire if they had arrested anyone at the shopping center. DCI guy says, Atujashikamutu. The police said they neither have arrested anyone nor had they issued a warrant of arrest for anyone in that area. Hmm. Kapleni said the following day they called the DCI officer at Kaptembo police station to inquire if there was progress on his brother's whereabouts. Police said they were still following up the matter. That's when the family recorded a statement on his disappearance at the station. Officers told the family that the missing businessman's phone had been switched off at industrial area in Nakuru at 9.40 p.m. on that day. It was switched on again and later switched off at Limuru area. My brother went to Kapkures police post to have a look at the CCTV images captured at the shopping center. It was established that the vehicle that the abductors came in had arrived in the locality at 7.23. It left at 7.25. There were two short men, one tall man with a Maasai Shuka. They had masks on, maybe to conceal his identity. The car number plate, however, was not captured by the CCTV. The long search for Kiplimo began. Family members... In a bid to clear doubts, visited all police stations in Nakuru town. They extended the search to their hometown at Cabernet Police Station in Baringo Central. They found nothing. Every morning we used to go to DCI offices at Kaptembo to check if there was any news, but the police informed us they had not traced him. On 8th of March, Kapleni, the younger brother, received a call from a police officer who asked him to send him a picture of his missing brother. The guy disappeared on 26th. On the 8th of March, they're like, and they've been looking since the, he, he, he filed the report. Yeah. In the evening, a neighbor called Kapleni. He went to the neighbor's home, accompanied by another brother. They thought that their missing brother had been found. However, the neighbor said that he had received information from police officers that there was an ident unidentified body at City Mortuary in Nairobi. According to the neighbor, the police had found a body in Limuru in the middle of the road around 4.25 a.m., on 27 February, that's the night he disappeared, a day after Kiplimo went missing. Reports by the police indicated that adjacent to the body was a cracked motorcycle light and a lady's shoe. The police said that the place where the, the body was collected looked like an accident scene, but they doubted because Kiplimo's body had several cuts. Police took the body to Tigoni Sub-County Hospital on February 27th. On March 1st, it was transferred to City Mortuary because it was unidentified. DCI officers took fingerprints. After five days, his identity was known after the results of the fingerprints were released. The Bar Barut location chief was given the information by the police to relay to the family on the 8th of March. They went to the city mortuary. They positively identified the man. Bizarre. Crazy madness. 74 people killed. 2,500 displaced in North Rift banditry attacks. Now let's get to the news. <laughs> 7 a.m. Good morning.
Good morning, this is the News Wire. I'm Lea Ubaga. Impeached KC Deputy Governor Robert Monda has pleaded not guilty to all the four charges facing him at the Senate. The development came after the Senate clerk read out the charges at, at the start of an impeachment hearing at the Senate. The Assembly says the Governor solicited a bribe of 800,000 shillings from locals to help him secure a job for his son. Was the money subsequently uh, given to the Deputy Governor? Yes, when uh, the deputy governor requested the 800 uh, Kenyan shillings, we were uh, able to give him on the, the date of 28th, we gave him 500,000. The 28th Kenyan of shillings. which month? Uh, 28th of May. 28th of May? Yes. That was the year 2023? Yeah, last year. Where was that money handed over at? What venue was that? Uh, my, uh, my dad did a transaction of uh, 200 and uh, 50 from his account uh, actually it was 251,000 from his account to the DG's um, M-Pesa and then I did my mother sent me uh, 250,000 the Kisi County Assembly is represented by several lawyers led by Ndegwa Njeru, Mugirango South MP Silvano Sosoro, who was among the lawyers representing Monda in the case, was opposed by Senators Samson Chararghei and Boni Halwale of Kakamega, saying that there will be a conflict of interest. Mr. Speaker, I beg that we should not use Senate as a playground of local politics of what is happening in Kisi, Mr. Speaker. Could it be Senator Osoro, uh, uh, Honorable Osoro, and Simba Governor Arati extending their playful political ground? Is it not, Mr. Speaker, that amount to having a sitting of the High Court, for example, where a judge who would have sat on that matter then jumps and becomes an advocate? In the same court, Mr. Speaker. In the hearing that continues today, Monda faces charges of gross violation of the Constitution, abuse of office, gross misconduct, and crimes under national law. As I stated earlier, I did not know any communication yes. between my dad. So why are you crying? Where why are you crying? Okay. And it's not Dr. Monda who told you to sell your saloon or okay. forced you to sell your saloon. We are not told you to give him any bribe. So where is my business? Where did it go to? Yeah, that. When you sold it on 20th, Dr. Monda had not spoken to you, had he? Okay, we are, well, okay, where are the proceedings? Okay, the anyway, I think I've made my point to the Senate. Yes. I'd like to move on to a different issue. The government has announced that it plans to enforce new measures to secure residential apartments, lodgings and Airbnb rentals. The decision was arrived at uh, after a cabinet meeting chaired by President William Ruto. This comes after an uproar from Kenyans over the surging cases of murder happening at Airbnbs. The cabinet agreed that the short-term stay houses should maintain CCTV cameras in all common areas. Management should maintain an updated register documenting the verified identity of persons entering and exiting the premises as supported by proper identification documents. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission has arrested a principal of a secondary school in Narrow County for allegedly demanding a 50,000 shillings bribe for a sub from a supplier. The school had is said to have solicited the amount from a businessman dealing with the supply of general merchandise to the school. ESCC spokesperson Eric Ngumbi said that the principal was apprehended after pocketing 40,000 shillings as part of the demanded bribe and will be arraigned today. At least 74 people have been killed in separate attacks by bandits in the North Rift area in the past few months. This has also led to the displacement of more than 2,500 people, hence affecting development activities. The group of members of Parliament made the revelations when they appeared before the National Assembly Committee on Cohesion. The MPs told the committee at least 74 people have lost their lives in the hands of the bandits despite the heavy presence of security operators in the region. And finally, the U.S. House of Representatives has passed a landmark bill that could see TikTok banned in America. It would give the social media giant's Chinese parent company ByteDance six months to sell its controlling stake or the app would be blocked in the U.S. While the bill passed overwhelmingly in a bipartisan vote, it still needs to be clear that the Senate had to, has to sign, that the Senate will sign the bill through the President. That's the Newswire. I'm Lea Obaga.
Spice FM. Nakuru. Okay, a few minutes after 7 o'clock, we're getting into traffic hours. Slowly, slowly, uh, we're seeing that traffic has built on the thicker superhighway now past the Outer Ring Junction. It's coming in from Kasarani, and um, as we look at, <clears throat> as, a tick, as the seconds tick by, we'll see that we'll build up some. Uh, traffic also starting on Kangunda Road, and that's going towards the junction of Outer Ring. There's traffic on Kambu Road, as well as some on Limuru Road, so it's all a watch and see kind of thing for now. On Jogo Road, a little bit of traffic as well. And also on the eastern bypass, as you're coming in towards um, the Outer Ring Junction, also traffic coming in from North Airport Road. And Cabanas is also starting to build. All right, nothing too crazy yet. Let's see what happens as we get into traffic hour. Let's talk just in case something comes your way. Talk to us on Spice FMKE on X hashtag, The Situation Room. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room, seven the only way to seven. start How your are day. You doing? Welcome to the second hour of The Situation Room. Thank you to everybody who's tuning in. See King says, Ndu, hmm? Sasa. Poor Sana. Very good. <laughs> everybody who's also joining us on YouTube and Facebook and KTN Home. Karibu Sana Ndu. Yes. And be a CT, see King about uh, Mambo, yeah. Ecobank. Oh, right. Uh, so imagine 35 different markets. That's mm. the majority of the markets in Africa, the majority of the con countries in Africa with Ecobank. Imagine mm. 35. Mm. Then we're looking at four of them outside of Africa, mm. in the UK, in France, mm. in China, and in the UAE. That's where Ecobank has its presence. Now, imagine that you are in Nairobi. And you move to one of these markets tomorrow. Uh -huh. You don't have to shut down your account. Uh -huh. You will just land from the plane and you will continue however you choose to go. And then you will get there and you will start your business and your banking continues. In fact, it reached there before you. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. It reached there before you. Mm -hmm. You just go and you're there. Okay, well, you reached there and then people said, this is finished. You need to sort it out. Sorted. Mobile banking, you've sorted it out. Mm -hmm. It traverses boundaries. Echo Bank. It's a banking group and it has made sure that your business continues even though you have to travel. Mm -hmm. 